Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a beer that might look a little bit familiar. That's right, a few weeks ago I reviewed a bottle of beer that looked almost exactly identical to this, but that was, well, just a slight difference. It's another of the kind of LD specials. The previous one was uh, from also from the Brasserie du Noir. It was called the Beer Millesemi, I believe. Well, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. There's a good chance I'm not. But this, this is the alternative version. And by alternative version, I mean this is the Beer Special. And what makes it special? Well, apparently it's rum finished, which, well, to be honest, I think I can get into. I've had a couple of rum finished beers this year, and to be honest, they've been very much at the much higher price point. Uh, so I'll be interested to see what happens lower down the order. Now, before we break into this, I must say in my previous video, which is up there, by the way, if you want to watch it, I did say that these were new into Aldi. Now, after a bit of research, it turned out they were in Aldi Europe for a while, and then after a lot of you in the comments told me I was an idiot, turns out they've been in lots of Aldis for a long time. Just not my one. Anyway, that doesn't matter. It is new to me, and once again, it is a beer from the Brasserie du Noir, which, as far as I can tell, is just an Aldi brand, but it doesn't really matter, because the other one was pretty good, so I've got very, very high hopes for this. As you can see, it comes in a very nice glass bottle with a super shiny gold logo on it. It's 5.5%. It is a 750ml bottle, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, matte black finish to it. It does look very nice indeed, and it also is super fancy because it has a cork and a cage on it. And in the last video, I also had a comment telling me that that cage is in fact called a mousselet. It's basically a French word for muzzle, so um, yeah, muzzle your beer shut. Before we break into it then, here is a better look at that fantastic bottle. I mean, it's so big, it doesn't really fit on the screen, but uh, let me wipe that down so it's all consistent. But yeah, super shiny. As you can tell, it struggles a bit with the light as a result, especially with that matte finish. But yeah, it looks pretty fancy and there is some info on the back, of course, which we'll get into a little bit later. I must say, these fancy bottles always feel like a bit of an event to open, especially with the Muselet cage. It just sounds like I'm saying muesli, doesn't it? I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced. Muselet, possibly. I know that makes more sense. Um, right then, fiddly bit off. This is where we hope it doesn't just explode and go absolutely everywhere. That noise, it's always an event. Going for the tulip glass this time. I may have used this one last time, actually. I can't quite recall. In the glass then, it's got a nice, deep, rich, golden colour, pretty lively, big, foamy head on it, but actually it looks quite a thick head. Um, yeah, it's deep gold, it's almost amber ale coloured, but maybe that could be just something to do with the, uh, the rum finish, who knows, but anyway. This is generally meant to be, I believe, just like a, a French blonde ale, um, kind of nondescript, basic French beer that's not lager, but not quite anything else. Um, right then, let's do the aromas. Distinctly French Euro style yeast profile to it. Light, fruity. Subtle rum notes in there. They're there, they're not big, but they are there. It smells a little boozy, tiny bit of alcohol on the nose and there's also just a little bit of spice to it. A little bit peppery, a little bit almost all spice kind of a deal. And hmm, this should be interesting. I wonder if those deep kind of spicy notes are actually the kind of matured wood um, from the rum finish. But anyway, let's find out. Cheers. Okay. Well, the good news is, I don't regret having a 750ml bottle of it. A few people commented on the previous video saying that that one was okay, but they preferred this. Now, I can see why. There's, there's a bit more going on. It has got that kind of sweet rum aftertaste, and there is a little bit more complexity to it, again, with that kind of spicy vibe. Now, I am a big fan of kind of traditional European beer, so I think for me I'd I'd be torn to be honest. This is more interesting a beer, 
but just stylistically, I kind of like it non fettled with, but that's just me. So it is though a bit thin, but reasonable body on it. Just about acceptable is what I mean. And it's very fresh, actually. It's got nice, nice refreshing palette cleansing quality about it. Bit juicy, subtly fruity, mature, deeper kind of caramelized fruit tones. Again, probably from the rum, but hmm. I've certainly had a lot, lot worse at a lot higher price. Now, unfortunately, as per the last video, I can't actually tell you what I paid for this. It wasn't a lot. It was from Aldi. It was probably three quid for the big bottle, maybe 350, something like that. I can't tell you because I lost my receipt and then when I went to check online, they no longer list it, or at least they no longer list the price, probably because the price changes from store to store, possibly, I don't really know, but hey, it's still in there, so you can go and look for yourself, but it's not silly expensive, that is all you really need to know. Right then, I'm gonna top it up and it's time for the top to bottom taste test. So, initially, light, slightly fruity, slightly carbonated on the front of the tongue. There's a kick of fruit sweetness in there. It's a little bit kind of synthetic banana sweet flavor. That is, well, that's the thing you associate with Belgian yeast, but I think a lot of the French yeast is derived from that, so it can have that character, but also that could be something in play in the room conditioning as well. Mid palette, actually. It's just a very nice, light, super refreshing European blonde beer. It's um, there's a few prickly notes, a bit. It's kind of just reminiscent of spice. It's not distinctly peppery. It's not distinctly chilly. It's not, you know what I mean. It's just got a few rough edges that make you go, oh, that's there's something going on. But it's not quite distinct enough as to what that might actually be. And, and then towards the back, as is normal for this style, you kind of the body comes back again a bit, it kind of goes thin in the middle and then all of a sudden actually, you know, actually it's not too bad as you get towards the end. Um, you get a bit more heat, a bit more booziness, very, I don't want to say very strong rum flavours, but the rum is there. If you're looking for it, you're not going to miss it. A um, few deeper fruity notes again like there was on the aroma. It's kind of like um, almost candied orange peel, that kind of thing. It's not deep, dark fruits, it's citrus fruits, but yeah, really, really sweetened off. And quite drying on the swallow. The aftertaste is, well, to be honest, very light, spritzy, dry rum, and just a bit, a very, very clean cut malt. Just a hint, just a, a tip of the hat to, I guess, the origins of the style. Um, I've got no complaints. For the price, it's not a expensively produced beer. It can't be for what they're selling it for. You can tell the body's not quite there. There's not really much hop content, or at least it's not really visible. And if we're honest, the rum finishing is doing most of the legwork. But that said, it's a nice, clear, refreshing... It doesn't feel synthetic. It doesn't feel like it's going to give you a headache. And to be honest, I'm more than looking forward to having another glass of that. Well, as soon as I finish this video. Let's take a look at the bottle. On the front of the bottle then, it's Brasserie du Noir, the brewery of the night, I guess, uh, from France. Um, again, I think that's just an Aldi thing. I don't think that's a real brewery, although I could be mistaken. Uh, the beer special is uh, Cuvée, Cuvée Exceptionnelle which I don't really know what that means because my French is okay, but not that good. It's a, I'll, I'll try and translate as much as I can. It's a brewery of France, as we already know. It's a rum finished beer. Um, once again, they believe it to be exceptional, 5.5%. And on the back, it says, a premium dry hopped French beer. There's not much dry hopping evident in this, but I mean, it is fresh. It does have a freshness to it that you associate with dry hop beer, but it's not a hoppy beer. And I'm kind of thankful because hoppy beer with that Euro yeast mm, doesn't always pan out too well. Um, it says, uh, flavoured with rum-infused oak chips. This method gives the beer a superbly complex and mouth-watering flavour. There you go. And then it's just got 
all of the rest of the info. There's uh, 4.1 UK units in this massive bottle, which is not surprising. Normal drink aware stuff. It's got the calorie information should you kind of want it. Um, doesn't say where in France it's made specifically, but the only descriptions are dry hopped beer flavoured with rum infused oak chips. So, yeah, I think it's legit, or at least as legit as you're going to get for a discount beer in a discount supermarket. It doesn't actually give us a full list of ingredients, which is a bit disappointing because I would have liked to have known exactly what went into this to make sure there's nothing uh, untoward. But it, to be honest, it doesn't taste like it. It's always a bit difficult with infusions of things. They say it's just rum infused oak chips, which effectively saves the same purpose of barrel aging, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. So sure, it makes sense. I'd be a bit worried because, well, I know France has a tendency to put in, um, well, a lot of adjuncts into beer that's flavoured like other boozes, thinking mainly of Desperados there, if I'm honest, but it doesn't come across with that synthetic, cloying, plasticky nature that some of those do. This does genuinely seem pretty reasonable. If not, a little bit cheap, but, well, it is a little bit cheap, so who's complaining? Very rarely do I get to top up my glass for a third time during a beer review. This is the perk of these 750ml bottles, I guess. But, um, well, just see if it's changed any. The aroma is still very much as it was. A bit more, kind of, again, that synthetic banana, almost bubblegum aroma on the nose that you get in a lot of Belgian beers is coming through. The flavours, as they often do as a beer warms just a little bit, the flavours are getting a bit richer and also... The sweetness is intensifying. It does now seem maybe just a bit too sweet, but well, rum's quite sweet anyway, so maybe that's not a surprise. It wouldn't put me off though. I'd still buy it again, um, but just be prepared. If you don't like sweet beer, it might not be quite for you. Don't get me wrong. It's not the sweetest. It's not a sour beer. It's not, you know, it's not a double chocolate style it's it's not the sugariest thing ever it's just maybe a little bit sweeter than the style normally is and that yeah just something to keep in mind but otherwise yeah pretty much exactly as it was before so that then really is all I've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you will be so kind and I'll catch you next time cheers